Thanks for joining us today. We love to hear how God is using this ministry in your life, so we encourage you to share your story with us at info at fellowshipgj.com. Also, if God is using this ministry to impact you, we want to encourage you to partner with us financially. You can do that online at fellowshipgj.com and pick the giving option that works best for you and help us continue to bring the message of Christ to our community and beyond. Again, thanks for joining us and enjoy today's message. Now, I want to let you know something about the culture of our church. It's interesting because growing up here in middle America, we are taught to shut up our entire lives. Like you go to school and your teachers tell you, stay in the back of the class, shut your mouth. If you need something, raise your hand. And we're told all the time, keep quiet. As a kid, we're at the table at a restaurant and your parents are telling, shh, be quiet. Let me tell you something. That is exactly the opposite of the way the church should look. You know, there's a, there's a, there's an old Bible word, amen, amen. We've all said it at the end of our prayer. We say it in, in the most churchiest voice we can, amen. Do you even know what that means? It means let it be so. It means I want that. Me too, me too. So when you hear people shouting out stuff and like we're talking about the goodness of God and you hear someone say something like, amen, they're saying, I want that too. Me too. And guys, I'm telling you, when we speak out over our lives, it's powerful because we're coming in agreement with God's word and you don't have to say the churchy word, amen. You can actually say, I want that. Or give me a, woo woo, that's awesome, right? Like, you, you can shout out however you want, but I want you to speak to me. You have permission. In fact, turn to the person next to you and tell them it's okay to talk in church. No one's going to get sent to the back of the class here. We're, we are going to be very thankful for the fact that God wants his people to be passionate and excited about the fact that we serve a God who is alive and active. So we are not a quiet church because a quiet church is a dead church and we are anything but that. Are you with me? Acts chapter 3, we're going to dive into this. Acts chapter 3, we read a story of a man who uh, encountered a couple people who loved Jesus and he had a miracle and I wanna share it with you today. Acts three, verse one says, Peter and John went to the temple one afternoon to take part at the three o'clock prayer service. As they approached the temple, a man lame from birth was being carried in. Each day he was put beside the temple gate, the one called the beautiful gate, so he could beg from the people going to the temple. And when he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for some money. Peter and John looked at him intently, and Peter said, look at us. The lame man looked at him eagerly, expecting some money. But Peter said, I don't have any silver or gold for you, but I'll give you what I have. In the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, get up and walk. Then Peter took the lame man by the right hand and helped him up. And as he did, the man's feet and ankles were instantly healed and strengthened. And he jumped up and stood on his feet and began to walk. And then walking, leaping, and praising God, he went into the temple with them. And all the people saw him walking and heard him praising. And when they realized he was the lame beggar that they had seen so often at the beautiful gate, they were absolutely astounded. Have you ever been absolutely astounded by what God can do in our lives? I love this because this, this story shows us that, that many of us learn to live with things. We learn to just accept things that God wants to deliver you from. That you might be going through life dealing with something, feeling like it's just the way it's always been and just thinking that's the way it has to be. But Jesus died and rose again to deliver you from that very thing that you've just accepted to be common and ordinary in your life. And the Bible says that Peter took the lame man by the hand and lifted him up and immediately he received strength and began walking and leaping and praising God. And I want you to know that God is not only able, but he is willing to and he is powerful enough to pick you up, to lift you up today. So I wanna speak to you from from the subject, lift me up. Would you pray with me today, church? 
Let's do it. Heavenly Father, uh, it, it's not by my words or my strength or my power uh, that we're hoping for anything to happen. What we're hoping for is for your presence in this room. So we invite you and we pray that God, you would lift us up, that you would speak to us, that we would come right in alignment with what you want to do in our lives. So God, we pray that you would pick us up where we've been stuck in the past. And it's in Jesus name we pray. And everybody said, amen. amen. This man in Acts chapter three was a man that we see was used to being lame. He was used to begging. He spent his entire life begging. We know that, that, that he was born, something happened in the womb, so he was born lame. So his entire life, he was used to being carried around and, and sat in different places. He was, he was really at the mercy of other people. Like they, they would sit him somewhere and then he would watch other people who were mobile uh, move past him and he would watch the world move around him. And he got into a mindset uh, where he just became a beggar. He was used to begging. And that's a terrible thing. It's an absolutely terrible thing to be in a mindset where, where, where you live off of the benevolence of other people. And I'm not talking about money here, okay? Because on one level, yeah, we could be talking about the benevolence when it comes to finances and, and living off the finances of other, only, only being okay if other people are taking care of you financially. But you can, you can have millions of dollars in your bank accounts and you can still be a beggar. If, if you're going through life with the begging mentality that I need from other people in order to be able to make it. And I wonder, I, I, do you have a mindset? It, could it be possible that you could have a mindset where, where, where like you're doing good when it comes to, to your finances, but then when it comes to your feelings and your emotions, you're going through life begging, wondering like, are other people going to be happy today? Because that's going to determine whether or not I'm going to be happy. Is my boss going to be in a good mood today? It's like, like it, today's going to be a good day. I don't know yet. I haven't ran into her yet. I haven't, I haven't, I don't know, is she going to cuss me out? I don't know. Like, it, it, and you can go through life and it's a terrible thing when you're going through life, living off of the benevolence of other people. I, I don't know if I'm going to be good or not based off of not anything I can do, but what will they do for me? And this man was used to begging. He, he, he was stuck. He was stuck beside the gate because that's where they put him. And one day he's sitting there and at the hour of prayer, here come two men who know Jesus. Peter, a preacher, and John, a preacher, who, who come and they're, they're coming to, to worship God, to praise him, to pray at the temple. And as they're walking by, this man sitting there and he's watching one person pass by after another, one passerby after another, one after another. And here comes Peter and he looks at him and he's thinking, just another passerby, just another passerby. Kind of like some of you. Some of you came in here today and you, you had that another passerby mentality. You're just thinking, it's just another Sunday morning. No, I don't know. Like, I don't know if anything good is going to happen today? I don't know. You going to go to church today? I don't know. It's rainy outside. It's the last Sunday of uh, spring break. Uh, I don't know. Get, bring me some coffee. I'll see how I feel in a bit. <laughs> I don't know. Just another Sunday morning. And he's, de he's there with low expectations. But let me tell you, church, that, that ordinary is the enemy of miracles in our lives. And you need to understand that if you get stuck in a rut of, of low expectations, of the mundane routine, of just going through life the same old, same old, never expecting anything to happen, that becomes an enemy of seeing God do work in your life because we should be people who are expected. And what we see here is when he looked up and he finally saw that Peter gave him a, a little bit of attention, he got expectant that maybe something can happen. And he was expecting money from people. And let me tell you that that, that is one of the the reasons why I love our church is because our church is a church where we are expecting things to happen. We are expecting God to do things. Am I right? Like, don't put me anywhere where nothing is happening. Right? I don't want to be in a job where we're not doing anything. If, if I'm in sales, I don't want to be in a business that's not making sales. Like, let's get this thing going. If I want to be in a relationship, let's fire this thing up, right, baby? Like, uh, let's, let's bring it to another level because I don't want to be anywhere where nothing's happening. There's an expectation, and that's why I love our church. It's because as a pastor, let me be honest with you, I come here on a lot of Sunday mornings, and I have no clue what's going to happen. <laughs> 
but I'm expecting that something's gonna happen. I'm expecting that God is going to show up. And I don't know what exactly it's going to look like, but he shows up. And think, aren't you thankful that God shows up every day in our lives, every day in our church where marriages are being fixed and, and, and people are coming out of addiction and people are coming out of depression. People are getting saved. Kids are coming to know God. Aren't you thankful that we can expect that God will show up and work on our behalf? Man, he loves us. And this man, he looks up and he's, he's expecting, like, 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 give me some money. And we see that that's not exactly what happens in the story. But what I, what I do want to talk about in the moments that we have together is that this man, when this transition happened in his life, in Acts chapter 3, he went through three stages. There are three stages to this man's story. The first stage is the limping stage. This man started off this story in the limping stage. The limping stage is the stage of dysfunction, right? This, this is when you're getting by, doing the best you can with what you have. You're just like, I'm just trying to survive. I'm just trying to make it through the day. No, I like, I'm gonna get up and I'm just gonna put my head down and go to work and make it through the day and I'm gonna use the resources I have. I'm just gonna try to make it. And he was in a place of dysfunction and he was limping through life. And, and see, the implication here in this story is that this happened from the womb. So something must have happened while he was in his mother's womb that caused him now as an adult man to still be limping, to still be crippled, to still have problems. Isn't it interesting how something can, could have happened way in your past and yet you still feel yourself limping from it today? It's crazy. You can you could have something that happened. You were seven years old. You're 35 now. You're 45 now, and you're still limping because there are things that can happen way, way in your past that can cause you to limp well into your life. And what's interesting is is, is the society that we live in, the culture that we're in. It, it's okay. They'll like they'll comfort you for a moment. They'll, they'll be okay if you go through a tragedy, if they'll, you go through a difficult time for a little bit, but you better hurry up and get over it. Because if, if they find out that you went through a difficulty last week, and you lost a loved one a, 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 a year ago, they'll be like, okay, we'll, we'll have a little bit of grace for you. But if you go, wait a minute, something happened when you were a kid and you're still, you better get over that. And, and, and there's like, there's a lack of sympathy, a lack of caring. And when we find that this man here is probably at a place now where people, they're, they're, they're sick of seeing him on the side of the road. They're sick of seeing him begging. They're sick of seeing him. Every time, every time they see him, he wants something from me. He's asking, he wants more. And, and, and that's where this man is stuck here. He's stuck in this limping stage. He's stuck in a place of dysfunction, but he's saying, but, but you don't understand. Like, I, I want to be mobile. I want to move around. I wish I, I, I could have been farther, right? I, I could have made it through school, but I was limping. Uh, my marriage could have survived, but you don't understand. I had something going on that was dark and deep within, and I, I was limping. I, I could have raised my kids better, but I was limping. And there are some of us in this room that, that you're going through life right now, and you're in that limping stage. You're doing the best you can with what you have, but, but, but it's this this stage of dysfunction that this man is in at the beginning of this story. But man, I am so glad, I am so glad that trouble doesn't last, that the Bible tells us in Psalms 30 that weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning, right? That we have good news for the believers that, yeah, we will go through tough times, we will go through dark nights, but joy comes in the morning because we see in this story that this man, he didn't even know it, but he was about to be transitioned from the first stage, the limping stage, into the second stage. And the second stage that we're looking at in his life is the lifting stage. The lifting stage. See, when, when, when Peter and John came by, I want you to check this out. Peter and John, they're preachers, okay? So preachers do what preachers do best. They preach at everything. I'm a preacher. I can relate to this. I feel like I could fix anything with preaching, 
right? I've never met a preacher who doesn't agree with this. So saying, I'll just talk about it. Like, like if there's a problem, I'm going to preach about it. We, have, we might have an issue in the house and you, my wife will attest to this and she's rolling her eyes at me right now because, because like, what, well, there's a problem with the kids? Well, let me get up and let me tell you what the Bible says about that. Because in First John, we, like, I'll preach it out right now. It, it's like, I feel like I could fix anything with preaching. And, and, and in fact, I will even, I'll preach at the TV. Like they don't even want to watch the news with me because I like, I have to hit the pause button and go, wait a minute, because in the Old Testament, the Bible says, it's like, <laughs> she's like, Dan, knock it off, right? Well, well, I'm a preacher. So to me, it's a little bit strange that Peter, who is the preacher, walks by this man and he sees him begging on the side of the road. He, he doesn't preach to him. He doesn't preach to him at all. He, does, he doesn't say, let me, t- let me explain something to you. The law in the Old Testament would tell you that blah, 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 blah. He, he doesn't do any of that. No, in fact, uh, he, he, doesn't, he doesn't preach to him at all. And, and sometimes we've got to be able to just sit back and rest and wait on the Lord to do things instead of just trying to control everything with our mouths. See, sometimes the reason why you're not reaching your unsaved spouse, the reason why you're not getting through to your coworkers and your employer is because sometimes preaching and nagging and griping about it is not going to be the way that God moves and fixes it. So we see that Peter, the preacher, he comes up and he doesn't preach to him. In fact, we see that he doesn't even pray for him. Wait a minute. Sorry, prayer warriors. Sorry, intercessors. But if we look in the story here, did, did he pray for him? Did, did he say, Heavenly Father, um, we just let everyone pause for a second because uh, we need to stop here. Let's lay hands. And Heavenly Father, there's a man here who's been lame. He didn't tell God what well, God already knew about this man. He didn't talk to God about him at all. What did he do instead? He didn't preach to him. He didn't pray for him. What did he do? He didn't speak to God about it. He spoke to the situation that was dysfunctional. He challenged the man. He said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I say to you, get up and walk. He challenged that situation that was dysfunctional. And sometimes we don't need to be preaching about how things should be fixed and how things should change. Sometimes we need to turn the direction of our speech towards that area in our life that is broken and needs to be fixed. And we need to start speaking to the area of dysfunction. So this is no longer saying, I I, I want to get healthy. This is saying, I will be healthy and I will put this fork down and I will start making better decisions. And it will be, well, I don't feel good, so I hope I hope I have a better day tomorrow and I hope I feel better. No, I will get out of this bed and I will praise God today and I will walk into my workplace with a better attitude and a face lifted up and a higher point of praise. Why? Because because sometimes you have to speak to it, speak to that situation and challenge that area of dysfunction in your life. It's It's not just sitting back hoping and wishing you know, like sometimes it, 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 takes, it takes challenge, it takes action, because watch this, this is crazy. Two men of God, Peter and John, they come to the man. They challenge him in the name of Jesus. They say, I say to you, get up and walk, right? Now, nothing happens. Well, wait a minute. What, what, what about those times when I prayed about it and I tried and, and I spoke to the situation, I challenged the situation and still nothing happens? What do you do when you challenge, you've been challenged but nothing happens? Verse seven says, then Peter took the lame man by the right hand. Look at this. Okay, so he challenges them and then he does something extreme. He does something so radical. He says, he takes the lame man by the right hand and helps him up. This had to have been embarrassing and humiliating. Like, this could have gone wrong on so many levels because he's taking a crippled man who can't stand on his own and he starts picking him up off the ground. But what does this show us? It shows us sometimes you have got to do something radical if you want to get unstuck in your life. 
Sometimes you gotta say, listen, enough is enough. I'm not okay being stuck here anymore. I'm gonna do whatever it takes. I'm gonna speak to this situation. I'm gonna, I'm gonna rely on people if I've got to, but I'm getting out of this stuck situation. We're gonna pray, we're gonna move forward. Whatever it takes, we're gonna do something different and new today. And he lifted him up right then and right there in that place. He was in the lifting stage. Man, I want to be around people who, who will lift me. I want to be around people who, who aren't, uh, because we all have the people in our lives that we would know have the negative opinions about everything you ever bring up. And, and, and sometimes I have to separate myself from those people. Because sometimes I need people in my life who will lift me up. When I'm feeling like I'm stuck and I, I can't move forward, I need people around me who will be like, no, you, you can move forward. You can do better. I was talking to some friends of mine just this last week, and they were saying there are times when we go through difficulty where you, sometimes you need the voice outside your head to be louder than the voice that's inside your head. Sometimes you need encouragement on the outside where you've got people around you saying, you can do it. You can make it. When you've got the voice on the inside, inside going, you can't make it. You're not strong enough. You need people to say, no, you can. God has put it in you. He's given you strength. Do you have people in your life that will lift you? And, and this is a, such an important thing to recognize. If you don't, become that for someone else. That, that's how this all begins. Is you've got to be that for someone else. Be the person that lifts up and says, you know what? You can do it. Oh, but, but no one's selling houses right now. The market's just not right. No, you can do it. Put a bigger sign in your yard. You know, start praying over it. Put, put, put big balloons on it, like flashing lights and everything. You got this. You can move forward. You can do it. Do you have people around you who will lift you? We need that. And we see that this man, he... He's, he's sitting there on the side of the road, the limper, the beggar. Peter and John come along, they challenge him. The challenge got them to a point where they decided they had to do something radical and they began lifting this man up and by Peter and John coming around this guy and helping him out of something. Do you, do you recognize that, that anytime you walk with God, he will start lifting you? He might put people around you to start lifting you, but ultimately, it, it's God who lifts you. That, that you can look back in your life and you'll start recognizing, like, maybe I'm not as far as I wish I was, but if I look back on my life, I can recognize I'm not where I once was. He has lifted me. I used to be in such a place of depression and I'm not there anymore. He's lifted me. I, I was struggling so much with this drug or this alcohol uh, hall addiction or this pornography addiction. I was but he's lifted me. Is there anyone in this room that would stop for just a moment and say, you know what? Thank God he's lifted me. Thank God he's brought me out. Thank God. Because we see between the second step now, the second stage this man is in, and the third stage this man is in, something happens, and, and you could miss it, because, because it's the same movement, it's the same action, but something transitions so quickly where first, this man's getting up off of the strength of Peter and John, but, but somewhere in this lifting stage, the man moved from just leaning off of the strength of the men around him to now all of a sudden, he's standing there by the power of God. And the transition happens where now the man is realizing I, I can stand on my own now. God has given me the strength and he's fixed that broken area of my life that where I was hurting and, and it kept me stuck. And now I'm standing here on my own. See, God then moved in and, and brought him to the next stage where we see the man went from being limping to being lifted to now he's in the third stage. He's in the leaping stage. Because the Bible says that now the man, he, he realized I'm standing by, my, by, uh, by myself. The Holy Spirit's helping me up. God has healed me now. These men, God used these men to help pick me up, but now God's the one that's carrying me. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna walk on my own. And then it says he went from walking to leaping to praising God, going, guys, do you realize what just happened to me? 
<laughs> I was messed up. I was jacked up. Like I was stuck here. Yeah, I'm the same guy just a minute ago that was asking you for money. And now he's healed me and he's, he's helped me. And God will take you to a place where, where, where you will just start recognizing the goodness of God and going, I've got to leap. I've got to praise him. See, when God lifts you, it is powerful enough that you can stand on your own. It's, it's all about empowerment in this stage. You, you, go, you go from dependence on others to, to independence. Actually, not independence as much as dependence on him. To where I once needed everyone else to lift me up, and now I recognize that God will lift me up all by himself. I, I once needed the benevolence of other people to bring my joy up, to bring my happiness up, but now I recognize he will sit with me right in those times when I feel sad and he will lift my spirit and, and, and he can help me through this. So now I'm at a place where I can start to not just be the one that needs help, but I can start to be the one that gives help to other people. And man, that's an important part of this transition. We see this man, because where is that? How, how this man help other people? Well, he went from, from limping, being stuck, begging. God lifted him out of that. And then after being lifted out of that, he starts shouting and leaping. And, 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 and the truth is, every one of us in this room, if we were to be honest, we, we've got ankles that have some issues. And we can't talk about it. We, we won't talk about it. I mean, so We'll get moved and we'll, we'll cry about it because we know that, that, that God needs to fix us and needs to heal us and needs to lift us up. And we've got those different areas where, where, where he's, he needs to lift us and heal us. It, but, but I wonder, are we the type of people like this man who once we recognize that God is starting to change us, we would start shouting out and leaping and praising the Lord because there are people in this room that you would say, you know what, I once was stuck so bad in addiction, but but God lifted me out of it. I couldn't have got out by myself. And in fact, other people tried to get me out, but I'm out now. Why? Because he lifted me. I, I was stuck so bad in pornography, but he got me out of that. And, and why? No one else was able to pull me. They tried. They, by their own strength, they, they were doing everything they could, but it was ultimately God who came through and lifted me up. Is there anyone in this room that you're just so thankful for the fact that God didn't leave you sitting on the side of the road? Man, he lifts me. But it begs the question, if ultimately God's plan for this man's life was that he was going to bring him to a place of wholeness where he would be able to walk through life, then why did he have to go through all this? Why did he have to go through a crippled stage? Why did he have to go through begging? Why did he have to go through limping? Why did he have to go through being lifted? Why is because God needed to use this man to show some church people that God still does miracles. God needed this man to show them, the, the church people, that there's a difference between being handicapped and stuck on the side of the road or being stuck in your seat because you choose to be. Because can you imagine what it would have been like for those people in the church that day? Looking all dignified, dressed in their Sunday best. They got all the right things to say. Praise God. Bless Jesus. That's right. How are you? I'm, I'm, I'm blessed and highly favored. Praise the Lord. Thank you. And other cliches. <laughs> God is good all the time and all the time. Right? I mean, we're, after all, we're, we've got it all together in here. And all of a sudden, somebody leaps past you. Like, what was that? Don't you know you can't be leaping and shouting and praising in church here? Someone needs to show that man how to be dignified, right? Can you believe that? But sometimes you need someone who Jesus has blessed in such a way where they say, I don't care how long you've been in church and I don't care how dignified you are because you don't know what he lifted me out of. So I'm gonna be jumping and I'm gonna be shouting and I'm gonna be praising God. I'll tell you what, if it makes you uncomfortable, I don't care because you ain't the one that did it. So I'm going to praise my Jesus. I'm going to love my Jesus. Why? Because he did it. You didn't do it. He did it. So we look at this man's story and we go, wait a minute. 
This man went from being stuck to now he's shaking the whole church. He's shaking the whole world because they start talking about him. Wait a minute. Isn't that that beggar that we saw out there at the gate beautiful? That's what the Bible says. They're, they're talking about him. Isn't that, you see him jumping around here like this. that? Let me put it in today's vernacular. Isn't that that girl who got pregnant? Isn't that that couple, they, they just went through that divorce, there was that affair. Did you see them down there worshiping today? Did you see them praising today? Did you see them giving God glory today? Can you believe that? And it will shake a person to their core when they see someone who's been lame and someone who's had issue. Now all of a sudden, they're going, I am walking and I'm leaping and I'm praising God. And it didn't matter if you had anything to do with it, I'm gonna worship him. Because it separates a huge difference between church people and ex-lame people. There's a difference. Because church people, man, you gotta beg church people to do everything. You gotta beg church people to go to church. Like, beg church people to show up on time. It's an 11 o'clock service, right? I'm just a church person though. But if you've ever been lame, if you've ever been in a place where you needed rescue and your whole, your, your savior, your, the Holy Spirit came and he blessed you and rescued you and Jesus came and lifted you up out of that ugly place you've been in, then you're like, wait a minute, I don't care if it's at nine o'clock, I don't care if it's 11, I'm gonna be there early because I want the front seat. I'm gonna be down front because I'm gonna be the one leaping and praising the Lord. Would you stand to your feet with me today? Because church family, here's the good news for every one of you in this room. You might be in a season where you're limping. And if you hold on to our Savior, if you cooperate with him, he will lift you right out of wherever you're stuck. And there's good news for you today because maybe you're being lifted right now and you feel like you're just relying on the help of other people. But the good news is, is it's a season that lasts only for a period of time before we start to become the testimony that God is using us for. That, that he can use your dysfunction. He can use your pain. He like, are you, am I, Dan, are you saying he's causing me pain? No. But the pain you're going through, he can use it. He can use it to where then you go out into the city and now you're all, all of a sudden, you're the person that, man, I'm rubbing people the wrong way because everyone wanting to be dignified, and this is a professional place here, and, and I'm walking, talking about Jesus, and I'm leaping, talking about Jesus, and I'm going through my day, praising the Lord, and all of a sudden, people start going, but I know her issues. I know his problems. I know him from when. And they start to look at you and go, wait a minute. If he can do it for them, maybe he can do it for me. So God wants you. He wants to use you. He wants to rescue you. Why? Because he loves you. But even beyond that, when you let him, he'll start to use you to rescue other people. If there's any ex-lame people in here, let's give the Lord a shout of praise before we leave today. We thank you, God. Oh, we thank you, God, for rescuing us. We thank you for your love. Help us to be the type of people with exuberance who will go out of here walking and leaping and praising you and making the rest of the world recognize, wait a minute, if, it, they, if he can do it for them, then he can do it for me. Use us, we ask you, Heavenly Father. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said, amen. Love you, church family. Thanks for listening to this week's message at Fellowship Church. If you have not made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, I want to give you the opportunity to do that right now. The Bible says in the book of Romans, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved, Romans 10, 9. You can do that right now. I just wanna encourage you to pray this prayer with me. Dear Jesus, I am a sinner and I need forgiveness. Please forgive me of my sins. I believe that you are Lord, that you died on a cross for my sins, and that you rose again. And God, I thank you for that. 
I ask you now to be my Savior, to guide my life, and to give me a home forever in heaven. And God, I ask you this in your precious Son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. If you just prayed that prayer for the first time, or if you need prayer, we would love to hear from you. You can contact us at 970-245-PRAY or at prayer at fellowshipgj.com. Thanks again. We hope to see you next week.